I have this tweet from Political Math on Twitter, Polymath. Mm. It's a clip from Stephen uh, Colbert's show where he likens Trump voters to the Taliban. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. And yeah, Polymath yeah. says there are two options. This is a ret- rhetorical game, and people like Colbert are so frightened by reality that they retreat to this harmless rhetorical, rhetorical marshmallow happy land where nothing means anything. Or two, they're serious, and they think we should kill Trump supporters. That's, that's a horrifying I think it's, prospect. I think it's somewhere in between. Um, I think it's also the idea that with what we're saying right now, right? They have this belief system. They have this belief system in the power of the, the not just the power of the state, but the grace of the state, the grace of the overstate. And so the Taliban refuses to believe in the grace of the state. Trump supporters refuse to believe in the grace of the state. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, it's like one of those logic equations right. where that, that doesn't mean that they believe the same things right. as the it's Taliban. A false equivalency. It's yeah. a false equivalency. Yeah, you know. I, have a, I have a Twitter thread I'd like to pull up and uh, show y'all guys something. Uh, whenever there is an apocalyptic news cycle, I always start the tweet with, I don't want to set the world on fire. I just want to start a flame in your heart, which of course is a fallout reference for those that are fans. And it's just uh, the imagery of that song playing, for those that are familiar with Fallout 3, is that you see DC in a wasteland. It's a, it's a nuclear wasteland, and it's playing this old song from, I think, the 50s or something like that. And that's why I write it. And I've pulled up. Let's see what we got here. We got four. We got eight. I, uh, we got uh, I literally 16. literally have the entire playlist right here. There you Fallout. go. Great yeah. sauce. <laughs> I've got 16 articles I pulled up about supply chain collapse. And the reason I pulled this up is because there's a big story about Nando's uh, food, a Nando's shortage. Chicken, yeah. 50 restaurants were shut down in the UK because of a chicken shortage. So I've been tracking the food shortage story for some time and also the food inflation story. And the one thing I've said over and over again is that for some reason, the mainstream news cycle is not talking about the food shortage of which there is one. And maybe for the most part, you don't notice because a shortage of, uh, of food in certain areas just means you eat something else because we still have a lot of food. Or also, it, it could just mean you're paying more and slowly starting to notice. Maybe you see Joe Biden increase food benefits because prices are going up. That also happens. And the reason I bring this up is after I showed these 16 articles saying things like Nando's closes 45 restaurants, Rogue Valley restaurants facing food shortage, Burger King, Popeye say labor shortage and, and, and food shortages are causing uh, prices to increase, understaffed Colorado restaurants. So it's not just food, it's also labor. I then show this. The one thing you know I love to cite, particularly over the past week, how would you rate the condition of the national economy right now? Democratic voters say 57% fairly good. I did a Google search for food shortage. And it's page after page after page, all in the last week of all these localities saying we have shortages of this, that, or otherwise. Chinese food restaurants across the country have been, they've been reporting it in various jurisdictions, but because CNN doesn't say it, it must not exist. And that is the cathedral, the religion these people follow. How in, how could anyone who watches the news, legitimate news with a critical mind, believe the economy is going well. We had 4 million resignations in April. They're calling it the great resignation. They say more are coming. They say, oh, but look, we added 950,000 or so jobs this past month. But we also have 10 million a record job openings because people are quitting. More people are quitting. We may be adding jobs, but people are quitting. You've got a food shortage. You've got Nando's shutting down, and yet you still have people. Look at this. Here's the best part. During uh, Donald Trump, I think it's fair to say, the, uh, the Democrats believed the economy was pretty good. During Donald Trump, even though they didn't like the guy, I can respect that. They believed that it was fairly good, not very good. But then something happened. The coronavirus stock market crash, and there was an inversion. All of a sudden now, the Democrats felt everything was bad. And do you know what date it was? January 20th. That, that, that started to flip? What a great January guess. 20th. Gen- Gen- January 20th. Good guess. The moment Joe Biden, Joe Biden gets elected, it was a little dip after election day. But after Joe Biden is inaugurated, the, the Democrats who felt the economy was very bad plummeted. And the Democrats who felt the economy was good skyrocketed. <laughs> Simply by virtue of having a different president, all of a sudden the economy was good. I, I got to say, I don't think any of those numbers have any value. It sounds like they're just voting whether or not they like the president. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, um, well but, but, but no, but think about what that means. When you look at independent voters and, and Republican voters, they track more like so with, this the, is, with the truth. Th- but this also goes back to what we were just saying. When you view your theological belief 
as through the lens of the state. So you believe in the grace of the state. I want to I tease this out a little bit more. Then the leader of the state right is now also Divine. the leader of your religion yep. right <laughs> and he so, preaches to oh, you Biden. so he if preaches he, to you right so mm-hmm. if you're if you're you know pope all of a sudden becomes donald trump and you're an avowed liberal democrat right this kind of explains some of the reaction that you got to that right this where it was a a visceral emotional experience that they had when he was elected versus a lot of people who looked at it and said, oh, you know, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't vote that way. I'm, I guess we'll have somebody else in the office for a term. I have to imagine it must be like being Catholic and seeing the, the, the devil literally rise from the ground. You'd be you'd be freaking out. You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, the conservatives view a separation of church and state as in I recognize that I have my religion and then I have. Well, maybe not all. This is a, a gross exaggeration, but there's a, the idea of the separation of church and state can collapse in two different directions. You can either have the church become the state and eat the state, where you saw a lot of the conflicts in the medieval ages as they're prescribed by non-literate historians. And then you have the communist example where they dissolve the church and take on its authorities. What is the difference between the church and the state? The state is the sword, the church is the pulpit. So the church tells you what is right, but does not have the ability to enforce it with the sword. The state has the sword, but does not have the ability to dictate to you what is right. Because the state, the sword is only there to, pr- to um, honor contracts and protect rights, not dictate morality. So if I go to a, a pastor and a pastor says, tithe or um, don't cheat on your wife or some sort of positive thing like, you know, what, if you need if you want to do some good, here's a, a you're, here's some charity you can participate in. That's different than the state coming to you and saying, uh, we're, we're you're going to do what we tell you is good or we'll use the sword against you. And then and so you're talking about this this pope nature. Yeah. These people don't believe that the economy is bad because their savior is in uh, is, is there. Mm. Like it's it's because Joe Biden. But, but but even even when Trump was president before covid. There was still it was over sixty percent in. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry, that was Obama. When when uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, hold on, hold on. I'm, sorry. I'm looking at one part. <laughs> sorry, you just it's, hit me it's, that. It's, it's it's from from. I get them confused all the time. Same, from sixty percent down to forty percent before COVID. So it was between wow. forty and sixty percent of Democrats felt the economy was fairly good under Donald Trump. I mean, forty percent is still pretty high. Right, right, right. For That's that, why for, I, was, for I, that I don't want to make it seem like right. You know, under Obama, it was like sixty-five percent thought the economy was very good. Donald Trump got elected. There was a little drop off, which is kind of hilarious, but a little one. And it stayed around 60% for a little bit, for a little bit, and then went down to 50 about, you know, a year later and then down to 40. And then COVID happened. And it hits the bottom. And then Biden gets elected and it goes right back up. So if we're using this as a measure of statistics, it's a set of facts, not evaluations. How would we evaluate the decisions of the people who, oh, what are we trying to evaluate here? Are we trying to evaluate the opinion, the, the, Validity of the opinions of the people who changed their um, opinion on the economy based on well, whoever uh, let, was let, in power? Me, let me let me put it this way: If uh, uh, if I said to an independent or a Republican, "Do you think it is going to rain?" They would look up at the sky and say, "You know, that does look like a storm cloud. I think it might rain." I would give it a thirty percent chance. So you get a hundred, you know, independents and hundred Republicans, and you ask them, and I'll give you relatively similar answers. The independents lean more towards it's more optimistic. It's probably going to be a little sunny. It'll clear up, but they all look, and then you get about forty. I think I think actually the um, the pl- the pl- plurality of negative is like sixty eight to seventy percent of independents and Republicans believe the economy is bad. So they're all looking up and they're going, "That's that's a storm cloud. It, it's probably going to rain." And some are like, "I don't know. I think it'll clear." And then you ask Democrats, and instead of looking up at the sky, they look down at their phones <laughs> and then they scroll through Twitter and they say, <laughs> "No rain." Better check CNN. Mm-hmm. Oh no, nope, CNN says it's not going to rain. CNN so says it's not raining, so it's not raining. And you're like, "But there's a cloud in the sky." Yes, yeah. So the governor of Minnesota is Governor Walls, also colloquially known as Lord Walls declares. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. Lord Walls declares that today no one shall be doing indoor dining. That's, oh. Oh. that's what De Blasio is doing. Yes, that's, that's exactly the same. Uh, Although Mark, Mark Wilhelm, Wilhelm, yeah, Wilhelm is demanding your papers. <laughs> Wilhelm Kaiser, Kaiser. Yeah. Wilhelm. Kaiser Wilhelm <laughs> Kaiser Wilhelm <laughs> Kaiser Wilhelm That's his name Was his name Warren Wilhelm yeah. Lord, Warren, uh, His original name yeah. Warren Wilhelm Herb Jr. Jr. I think Lord, Lord, what, 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 what did Kaiser mean? The, it was like a title? Uh, like Caesar. It's like Caesar. It's like, oh, okay. like you're the ruler. Oh, right. Of course. Yeah. Caesar, so Kaiser, Czar. It would, would, it, would, it, would, it, would it sound too cool to call de Blasio Kaiser Wilhelm? No, we should definitely <laughs> do that. Yeah, I, 100%. Cool. Kaiser. 
Yes, Kaiser, we will uh, absolutely show our papers. You know, the thing about New York is that you need your ID to get in, mm-hmm. let alone the vaccine passport. No ID. Sorry. So that's what? That's like 70% of the black community in New York mm-hmm. can't go inside buildings anymore. But what you know what? You know what? You know what? Honestly, though, I'm willing to bet up in like the Bronx and Harlem. They're not checking. What, yeah, are, what are they going to do? They don't have the means to do it. Like what I mean, I mean by that is like if I'm going into a like a corner store, or like a bodega or something, are they really going to sit there? And no, be I don't like, think you need it for that. Not not for that. But, but for like, like a but, sit down restaurant. But that could be Taco Bell. What about a stand? What if about you like want a to food be truck? Stands, you're, you're allowed to walk into a restaurant for takeout. So but, takeout's fine. Right, right. So what I mean huh. is by the means is that these restaurants have to hire someone to sit at the door and do vaccine checks now. So like when you're carting someone at a bar. Yeah, and, and so the most most of the places that have the ability to do this are like in Manhattan. They're not in Central Brooklyn or you know uh, South Brooklyn or uh, it's not Flatbush Avenue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, probably in the hipster areas. Do you where want, it's do you want to go into business with me? I want to start a business where we just vaccine check and we only take bribes. Oh, yes, <laughs> this sounds lucrative. Actually, you know, Afghanistan. It'll be called it's you a are vaccinated. You, 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 yeah. you might want to regret that because I'm willing to bet a company will pop up in New York right now. That says we we do vaccine checks and they contract to all the businesses and then right. they could easily have 30,000 employees in a week. I'm looking forward to the the, the black market that's going to rise up like the, the prohibition market like we saw with alcohol, the, the speakeasies. Restaurants and basements. Yes. Mm-hmm. All the, the groups, organizations of speakeasies that are going to now. It's going to be a genre. It's going to be a, an industry. It's gonna You're be right. Great. Yeah. Dude, prop up. Uh, it did so much damage to the American people and, and the economy and everything trying to prohibit alcohol. Like, haven't we learned our lesson? We see what prohibiting weed has done to society. You want to talk about group psychosis. You remove the weed and make people feel bad for it. So you want you want to, uh, here's a silver lining to that. So today is the 18th of August, 2021. Today's the last day for comment on the ATF's attempt to redefine what a receiver is for a firearm. Ugh. They're trying to go after 80% lowers and blah, blah. Today's the last day to comment on it. So if you haven't, please do. Um, it, it, and you can find more of that on recoilweb.com if you have to. Shameless plug. Uh, but here's the, here's, the, here's the silver lining. We just, wa- we just watched the American government, so great and powerful that it be, uh, accidentally lose a bunch of belt-fed machine guns, night vision equipment, silence, so let silencers, suppressors, rifles. To Black, an Hawk Black Hawk helicopters. Black Hawk helicopters. Did, did the mean, Taliban have to pay a Class 3 tax? Yeah. Or right, on, right, you know, <laughs> on any NFA <laughs> right? you know, regulated. We'll be going after them for decades. But for so, like, right. so, yeah. the, so here's the solu- part of that solution in the silver lining is stop taking the clowns seriously. Right? So when... when um, when David Chipman, they're trying to appoint David Chipman as the head of the ATF. He's, he's that mass child murderer, isn't he? He was a participant in Waco. So, yes. And, <laughs> and children were murdered at Waco. <laughs> yep. Yep, there you go. Yes, I also don't want him to show up at my house tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> By the way, not, not, not only unrepentant, uh, he's he a celebratory participant yeah. in Waco. I mean, oh, yeah, he's, he went on Reddit and he's lied He's gone on about Reddit it. And, and defended it to the hilt. To the hilt yeah. about Waco. Not even not even a question of, you know, oh my gosh, I wish it hadn't gone that way, but you know, we had our the situ- crazy he lied. situation. He just lied. straight up lied yeah. about the people. Actually, you were uh, telling us a good story right uh, before you went on. If you want to get it's not exactly bit. a story, but it's a really spurious connection of events. So well, it's what he did. It's what he said. Yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, we shot a firearm. The first time I came out here, we shot one of your firearms. It was a Beretta M82. Barrett. Barrett. Barrett I'm sorry. Yeah, Bar- Barrett M82. 50 caliber. Forest. Yep. Semi-automatic. <laughs> I know. I'm supposed to get my numbers on, right. <laughs> <laughs> or the name right. Those are words. Uh, <laughs> so we shot a Barrett M82. And the origin, a friend of mine who's a gunsmith this week, informed me on the origins of the Barrett M82. So back in the days when the Mujahideen were fighting against the Russians, w- the Americans created the Barrett M82 to use a common anti-vehicular round that, was, that had been around for a while, which was the 50 caliber round, and they put it into a sniper rifle that was semi-automatic, so you have to pull the trigger and then pull the trigger again, so it's no fully automatic, Every, you, you have to pull the trigger to shoot your round. Um, and the advantage of that firearm was that it could be used to take out certain Russian helicopters that were bother- plaguing Afghanistan. So that kind of gets ingrained in the cultural history of the firearm. And then a couple of years later, a decade and a year later, there's Waco. Hmm. And what happens at Waco? Supposedly, according to David Chipman, somebody shot down a helicopter with a plane. 
with a sniper rifle, which would have been a Barrett. And he, all he's got to say is they had a Barrett, so they shot down a helicopter. And he can go to, in front of the American people digitally and in voice, outright lie to them that people at Waco shot down a plane with a Barrett 50 caliber. And th- this is what he said on Reddit. This yeah. is exactly, right. he went on Reddit and was, yep. and was making this wow. argument. Yeah, it's not true. Account. Yeah, it's not even. Completely not did, it's a hel- co- did a helicopter get shot down? There, w- w- there was a helicopter that crashed, mm. if I'm not mistaken, but it, it was not related to it. Yeah, my understanding is it didn't happen. Yeah, it just it, no, it completely didn't happen. Yeah. But what your point is though is that he was using this sort of cultural history yep. of the, the weapons too. platform in order to basically, you know, not not even deduce, but just sort of like manipulate. connect, manipulate the narrative, yep. so that people would think that this helicopter had been shot down by them simply because they had a certain weapons platform, or right. he could even say, well, they must have wanted. To shoot down helicopters, because what else would you use a Barrett for? Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content segments you can't get anywhere else, Go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.